Now, that was the case where the images were in the image set created by the person who made the images. Let's look at a different set where the indexes are created from the image sets after the fact. Someone found the records at some point in the past and built an index in a separate book. When we go into an archive and look for, art, uh, for documents, sometimes we find a separate book that contains information about a, one of the sets of images in that archive. People who curate the record often create these indices in separate books, and when we find that, we photograph those as well. Let's do a quick example of what it looks like to use an image index that is found in a separate volume or a separate set of images. I'm going to use the task of looking for the marriage record for Thomas Dutton and Mary Cobb in Woodstock, Vermont. Now I'm going to go to Mary's page. I notice right off uh, in the record hints, because that's the lowest hanging fruit for me, I always look at record hints, that there's some vital records. It says Mary Cobb vital records, and that could be birth, marriage, death. Clicking on it, it pops open the record, and I see right off that this is Vermont Vitals. Uh, it has Thomas Dutton in here, has Mary Cobb, that the event type is marriage. So I was looking for a marriage record for Thomas and Mary, and the record hinting system found one for me, which is awesome. Now, I like to look at the images to validate anything that's found, make sure the data is accurate, and, and understand what I'm really looking at. There's always a view image link if an image is available, so I'm going to go ahead and click that link. It pops open the image right there for me to look at, and I see February 22nd, that's awesome, 1824, the uh, town is Woodstock, uh, it tells me the town clerk, I have great information here, but I also notice something. This doesn't look like a record created in 1824. This looks kind of like a Rolodex card with this hole in the bottom and printed data here. And I'm thinking this was created after the fact. The genealogist in me tells me that records created at the time of the event are more powerful and authoritative in, in defining the data on that event. And so I'm really not satisfied. I found this thing created after the fact, but I'd really like to go find the actual marriage record. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the search page. Now, we used the map in the last example. In a prior example, we clicked Browse All Published. But just down below Find a Collection, there's actually a data entry field. And if I just type Vermont, right there in place, it gives me lists of collections that matched what I typed in. And as I look over that list, this one here, Vermont Town and Vital Town Records, is, looks like an awesome one. That's a great place to look for a marriage record, and it covers the year 1824 that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It takes me to uh, the collection details page. The first thing I should always do is do a search for Thomas Dutton. So I'm going to do that search. I didn't find anything. And so my next step is to go browse through these images. And I can see there's 1.3 million images, which is a lot. But fortunately, it's broken down again, so I don't have to look through all of them. I'm looking for Woodstock, Vermont, and I've kind of reached an impasse. It's giving me a county, but I don't know which county Woodstock is in. Fortunately, someone created a really cool tool called Google. And if I do a quick search in Google, I can find that the town of Woodstock, Vermont, is in the county of Windsor. So if I click on Windsor, I'm taken to a list of all the towns in Windsor County, and Woodstock is one of those. And if I click on Woodstock, I can see that the records for that town are broken down by um, event type, births, deaths, marriages, etc. But I'm a little bit confounded because I have two sets of images that cover the year 1824. The first one, births, marriages, deaths, in what's called Volume A. And then I have this other one, marriages, that's in Volume 1. And... I guess I could look through both of those and hope that I find it, but those could be a lot of images. More useful to me is this index. It says index to marriages and covers the year range covering 1824. So I'm going to click on that. The first rule of working with an image index is to define how the records were indexed. Sometimes it's by date, sometimes it's by event type, it might be by surname. So 
I'm going to skip past these initial images because these are just the bookkeeping images that Family Search adds to define what you're looking at and keep ourselves honest. And I'm going to click on one of these first images just to open it up and see how things are organized. And I can see that it looks like they're organized alphabetically by the surname of the groom. This column over here looks like the name of the bride that the volume number and page number, which is what I really need out of the index, is present there. And in scrolling down and looking at these, I can see Thomas Dutton and Mary Cobb. There's the February 1824 marriage, and it tells me that I should be looking in volume 1, page 16. That's the key information that I need. And if I go back in the uh, waypoints, I now know which of these two to use. I'm going to dive into volume 1, and I'm looking for page 16. Clicking that brings me back into the image sets. Um, I could put 16 in here but and jump forward, but you have to remember image 16 and page 16 are not the same thing because we have all of these bookkeeping images up at the front. And so where this might be page 1 and 2 is actually image 4. The page numbers and image numbers don't always match. So I'm going to have to poke around a little bit, and I find that it's actually image 33 that has page 16 in the book. And looking a little closer, I can see there's Eli Dunham, town clerk, state of Vermont, Windsor County, be it remembered that at Woodstock in said, Windsor, in said county on the 22nd day of February. Um, this is awesome. That is the original marriage record for Thomas and Mary Cobb. So my next step, now that I found their marriage record, is I want to attach this record to them as a source, documenting a key piece of their life, and I want to attach it to them in the family tree. So I'm going to use that button at the top again, attach to family tree. When I click that, the image slides to the, the side. A new panel comes in that invites me to create a source. I can give it a title change that to marriage of Thomas and Mary Dutton. Now in this case, I can read this. It's not Latin like the last example. And so I'm just going to type in um, Eli Dunham, town clerk, be it remembered. I can type the whole thing in if I want. And when I'm done, I click next select person. Again, I'm presented with my history list. And because I visited, when I click that, because I visited Thomas Dutton recently in the tree and Mary Cobb, they both show up in my history list. I'm just going to click Thomas it retrieves him from the tree, but it also looks and says we find his spouse and his children uh, in the tree. And it turns out that Mary Cobb is mentioned in this record. So I'm going to go ahead and click on her as well and add her to this. That tells the system I want to attach this document, this image, to both Thomas and to Mary. Next, I click Next at the bottom. And it gives me an opportunity to provide my reason. A lot of times people ask, what should I put in that reason statement? And the answer is, you want to put the kind of reasoning you went through that caused you to believe that this record really pertained to those real historical people. And in this case, the names, the dates, the relationships and places, they all match what's documented in Family Tree from other records. And that's a fine reason statement. Then I'm going to click Attach at the bottom. And I can go back to Mary's page. I can scroll down to the sources section, and I see the record that I just added has been added as a source with the title I gave, links to the image. It's also added to Thomas in the family tree, too.